Now, a new article is out from the Washington Examiner, from columnist Zachary Faria, titled, Will There Be Any Media Introspection Over the Paul Pelosi Story? And he writes, quote, This is not to say that the more outlandish theories about the attack on Pelosi have any merit, but it does raise several questions about establishment media's motives for covering the attack how they did right before the midterm elections and the standards they actually apply to their reporting. Establishment media have failed in reporting on a major news story once again, and no one in the industry seems eager to embrace some introspection on how it happened. I'm always game for introspection and hearing another side. And so Zachary Faria joins us now. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. All right. So to me, the fact seems simple, right? Paul Pelosi, victim of a brutal political attack, suffers a fractured skull. I don't really care which side of the political aisle the attacker was on. And while it's interesting, in the end, the difference, what difference does it really make whether Paul Pelosi or the police opened the door? Yeah, I mean, really, it doesn't make that big of a difference. But what you consider is what we saw within the media of, of course, the usual race to be first. Uh, Politico at first reported that there was an unidentified person that opened the doors, which implied that it was a third person there in the room. And that obviously, people had questions because this is a major story. So people had questions. Did that person know Paul Pelosi? Did he know the assailant? Who was this person? Why did we not know who it was? And then it comes out that the police say, no, there wasn't an identified person. And then the New York Times turns around and points at right-wing media and says, well, right-wing media is now spreading misinformation. No one's going to confuse Politico with right-wing media. So that's sort of the pull that you have here between right-wing media continuing to do the just asking questions routine uh, and left-wing media sort of trying to cover their own but, faulty reporting standards. But, but again, I just don't think that there's anything. I mean, I hear you. There's there have been some media errors here, right? I talked about the guy, the, the entity that reported about the underwear. I think you're right. The Politico story was wrong. Um, and there should be a correction apology. I don't know if there was. There's been some inaccurate reporting. But do you feel that we know what happened? Or do you, are you still one of these people who are saying, I've got all these questions. There's so many unanswered questions here. As, as I just played some of the folks on Fox saying, I don't think there are any significant unanswered questions. Right. I think there's questions about minor details that are interesting to know, but I don't think we have any major questions about exactly what happened. But we do have a lot more questions about the media standards that were invoked in covering this story, because the story did happen right before the midterms. And what you saw was a push from media to make this about right wing, dangerous right wing rhetoric. You saw Margaret Brennan on CBS. Um, Margaret Brennan on CBS, for example, uh, demanded that Tom Emmer take down Republican ads that mentioned Nancy Pelosi because this divisive rhetoric was responsible for the attack. And so obviously you see a sort of reflexive push from right wing right. media trying to raise all these other questions, some of which were legitimate at the time, some of which now it's kind of just egging along the story. Right. I mean, because, look, I'm with you that that always saying to people, oh, you know, this le this leads to that is a tough road to go down, right? Then we're gonna have to get rid of all violent video games because, you know, in every murder case involving a teen, they say it was the violent video games, et cetera. Um, I hear you on that. And I think you're right to say, if and when media say, oh, it's gotta be because of this that led to it. But I'm concerned about the effort by the right-wing media to continue to undermine the investigation as if there's something, you know, sinister going on. I mean, even in your piece, you refer to the Biden Justice Department telling us one thing versus what the, the police are telling us, et cetera, as if the Biden Justice Department is engaging in some sort of cover up here. Well, no, what I put in my piece was that I was wondering why NBC would pull that report with very little explanation at the time and why Miguel Almaguer hasn't appeared on the network since then. Uh, the question was, I don't believe there's some grand conspiracy theory here, but NBC did pull a report that NBC Bay Area seemingly confirmed with a source that viewed the body cam footage, according to their reporter. Uh, and there was a question about why would they do that and why would they do that with very little explanation. And I figured maybe it's just them trying not to contradict the Biden Justice Department. That's a totally reasonable. Uh, is it really? Is it really reasonable? I see. This is where every we were in agreement on just about everything, and then you start saying it's reasonable to say, "Oh, well, the Biden Justice Department put pressure on them, etc." I mean, why well, no, isn't no, it no, just? No, that's not what I said. Okay, then I go said. ahead. I'll let you clarify. Go ahead. 
All I said was that it is entirely possible that NBC News didn't want to be seen as contradicting the Biden Justice Department on the story. This story, which, as you saw, has invoked several conspiracy theories. Yes. So they wanted to get in line with a more authoritative source there, and they decided to throw their own reporter under the bus. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.